Legacy of Darkness was released on June 6, 2003. This set introduced Spirit Monsters, a new subtype of effect monster with powerful abilities, but with the massive drawback of being returned to the hand during the end phase. Notable cards in this set include Air Knight Parshath, Asura Priest, Bottomless Trap Hole, Exiled Force, Fiber Jar, Royal Oppression, and a card that would strike fear into those who dare cross its path and leave the legacy in Legacy of Darkness, Yadagarasu. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, we avoided the three loss streak, and now it's time to see if we can't get a win streak of our own going. We stand in front of the wheel for what may be the last time. You may not see too much of this wheel in the future. I give it an episode, episode and a half max. We've segmented it between beatdown control and burn mill, which aren't necessarily archetypes, but entire play styles. That's because for the first year and a half of Yu-Gi-Oh, there aren't really very many archetypes to speak of. That starts to change next set and next ban list. Things start to fall into place for old school archetypes that you may be familiar with. Unfortunately, until then, we're likely just playing good stuff. The difference between a beatdown deck, a control deck, and a burn mill deck is probably only about six or seven cards deep given the amount of playables that are currently in the format. But don't worry, I've got interesting and fun options cooked up for every one of these. I'm gunning for control. I've got something really cool in mind. Now, what I've been using to determine what I play is a little unorthodox. I've been going to pojo.com, an online repository for old tournament reports, and you can see the 2003 <laughs> write-ups right on screen in front of you. They are not fantastic. Uh, this is a discussion of how Magnet was able to beat a 13-year-old at their local gaming store, and it had the absolute best win condition of anything I'd ever seen. Duel 3, his dad, who sounded like a jerk, was pressuring him to hurry up, and he could not concentrate in the duel, so he lost, even though it was still close. I don't think that's going to be our win condition versus Alex, but uh, maybe we can give a call to uh, Mama Simo and see if she can't intervene. In the meantime, let's spin this sucker and see if we can't rip what we're looking for. Now remember, we've got two spins because we won last week, and I will absolutely use it if we hit Burn Mill, not looking to play any deck even approaching that again. Oh! And there it is, control on the first spin. Now, realistically, we would probably want to be playing a good stuff deck with very few monsters. That's arguably the best deck in this format anyway but I'm going to be playing something else. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Legacy of Darkness. Legacy of Darkness introduces a wide array of interesting cards that are going to spice up the decks a little bit, but they're not going to completely transform them. This is very indicative of old school Yu-Gi-Oh, where each set would just come out with new, more powerful generic cards that were more and more situational, but were also helpful in dealing with specific threats. So I am in the shirt of shame. We're hopefully not going to be after this episode. We only get one spin this time around on the wheel and let's go ahead and see what we can get here let's get a nice couple good spins on and see if we can get either beat down or control that's most likely what we're gonna want just because it's obviously better than burn or mill and control i think is the best of the bunch so i don't think i can complain about this one so here's the list and <laughs> oh god i mean what is there to say other than i'm the smartest person who has ever lived we're playing tornado wall a legendary ocean now this is a deck that is either very familiar to you or you had a good childhood. Tornado Wall is one of the first really powerful build around cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. You can only activate it while Umi is on the field, and if it's face up, you take no battle damage from attacking monsters. A Legendary Ocean is always treated as Umi, it gives all water monsters 200 attack and defense, and it decreases their level on the field and in the hand by one. We can use this to cheat out tribute summons yet, there simply aren't any good ones. We can, however, use it in conjunction with Gravity Bind to keep all of Simo's powerful four-star monsters behind bars as our now three-star seven-colored fish can get in for big beats. Alongside this sucker, we're playing Aqua Spirit and strong enablers like Penguin Soldier, which we haven't gotten to see played at all, despite the fact that they are, in a vacuum, pretty great. What's more, Sinister Serpent is water, which... 
probably matters for something. Of course, I don't expect this to do much more than cheese out a game one victory, fingers crossed, and after that, we'll sideboard into a more conventional deck. Gemini Elves, the third copy of Magician of Faith, some Hand Destruction, Mystical Space Typhoon, Heavy Storm Premature Burial, Triple Scapegoat, Swords of Revealing Light, and Double Dust Tornado to deal with cards like Imperial Order. For the main deck, we're playing Double Aqua Spirit, Jinzo, he's just too strong, two Magician, two Penguin, Sangan, Sinister Serpent, Witch, Triple Seven Colored Fish, Triple Legendary Ocean, Change of Heart, Darkhold, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, 2X, Harpy's Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Nobleman of Crossout, Painful Choice, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, Snatch Steel, Call of the Haunted, Triple Gravity Bind, obviously not fantastic in a format with Jinzo, but we use what we're given, a copy of Imperial Order, a Mirror Force, two Solemn Judgment to protect our three Tornado Wall, and a Torrential Tribute. So realistically, I'm expecting this to probably lose game one, at which point we will enter a more skillful game two and three. But if it cheeses Alex, boy, oh boy, am I going to feel real smart. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. Admittedly, it does look similar to some of the decks we've played in the past. But again, this is just how the game was. We are going to be focusing on some of the newer cards. And I tried to jam as many of them in as possible. But even with some of these cards like Exiled Force, Fiber Jar, Yada Garasu, all being at three copies apiece, there are some arguments to not play more than one just because you really don't want to see them, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Starting off with Aeronite Parshath, this is an incredible one tribute monster that's able to hit into scapegoats, and if it deals battle damage, it will draw you a card. Legacy of Darkness introduces a lot of cards that really help counteract scapegoat in a lot of ways, and this is one of them. Now, obviously, a lot of people still played scapegoat back then, but Parshath being able to hit in for basically all of its attack power and then netting you card advantage on top of it made this card very terrifying. We also have one Asura Priest for the same reason. We can search this as well as the Parshath, actually. They're both searchable by Witch of the Black Forest, but it's nice because, again, if Joseph does manage to get some scapegoats up, we can just go ahead and just Asura Priest them all away, and it comes back to our hand, which is a little bit of built-in protection, even though it does make us lose some sort of tempo. We also have one Exiled Force. This is just a nice card to clean up stuff like Jinzo, which doesn't really have a native out at times. It's also in the form of a monster effect, and we can search it with Witch and Sangan, so it's not too difficult to access. One Fiber Jar. This is our insurance policy in case the games go south. If we get to a point where we're losing the game, we can search this with either Witch or Sangen, set it, and then reset the entire game. It doesn't reset our life points, but this is just an incredible comeback mechanic, and let's just say there's a reason that this card is banned. One Jinzo, one Magician of Faith, three Mystic Tomato, one Sangen, Sinister Serpent, Witch of the Black Forest, and the one Yada Garasu. I decided to bring a deck today that's the early iterations of hand control. Now, the problem with this is that we don't really have some of the strong hand-ripping cards available to us, at the current moment. We do have stuff like White Magical Hat, but that would require us to play something like Shining Angel over Mystic Tomato. It's just not worth it. When we get to Fronic Guardian, we get two very good hand destruction cards that help remove the threats from our opponent's hand. Then Yada Garasu can come in and deny our opponent of the draw. Yada Garasu is also searchable, which is nice. Yada just overall just makes it so that you can control the game so well. The thing is though, unless you have the board set up properly, Yada is not a card you really want to play three of. So that's why we're playing it at one. It will allow us to use it when we need it, but we're not going to be drawing multiples because otherwise the card's not going to be doing all that much. Three Gemini Elf is our primary beater because it hits over pretty much everything. It can also crash with Air Knight, which is nice, but we just need to have some sort of offensive pressure, and Gemini Elf is the best beater we have. For the spells, Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hold, Delinquent Duo, Two Graceful Charity, One Harpy's Feather Duster, One Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, Double Mystical Space Typhoon, Painful Choice, Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Regeki, Snatch Steel, and the Forceful century. This is 18, or excuse me, 17 spell cards, and these are like the 17 spell cards we've been playing for quite some time. We are playing hand control. We're even playing some more hand destruction cards that you're going to see here in the trap section. For the traps, Call the Haunted, Imperial Order, Mirror Force, and Torrential Tribute, and three copies of Drop Off. So, Drop Off is essentially a confiscation or a forceful sentry in a trap card. When your opponent draws for their normal draw in their draw phase, your opponent discards the card that they just drew. Drew. So what's interesting about this is that this in tandem with any of the other hand destruction cards is a way to help just get all of the cards out of Joseph's hand. So then if we can set up for a Yada lock, then that's how we are going to win the game. A lot of decks when they started going down this hand destruction route played this card at three. And when you see in Pharaonic Guardian in future sets, when there's more cards that are able to rip cards out of the opponent's hand, this is what we're going to be wanting to do 100%. For the side deck though, we have one Asura Priest as a second follow-up in case Joseph is really on the scapegoat. 
notes, and we want to just be able to just rip through them very easily. Two copies of Kaiku for any sort of graveyard shenanigans, two copies of Fissure in case he's on a more aggressive deck, the third MST, two Noblemen of Crossout. I mean, I could main deck this, I suppose, but I just wanted to have it in the side for when I know what Joseph is specifically on. Three copies of Scapegoat. I could main this because I am playing Control, but at the same time, there are a lot of cards that deal with Scapegoat specifically, and so if I don't play Scapegoat, I don't make myself vulnerable to those specific cards. We'll see if that pays off. If he's on a more aggressive deck, I might just want to play this anyway, but some of the aggressive tools in this format can just tear through Scapegoat. I mean, Parshath, Asura Priest, we didn't even talk about Spear Dragon. That can just pierce through a Scapegoat and just hit for 1900. There's a lot of cards that can help deal with this. One Swords, again, for aggressive decks, one Magic Cylinder in case we want to troll Joseph, and two more copies of Torrential. If we really, really need to go heavy on the control, we can have more board wipes to be able to do so. So that's it for the deck. I really just wanted to give you guys an early glimpse as to how hand destruction and hand control really worked. And as we get into later sets like Pharaonic Guardian, you're going to see more cards become incorporated and see just why this was the top meta strategy throughout 2003. But I'm excited to see what Joseph's got. It's the first episode of the new year. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Joseph, happy new year, buddy. You're going to be wearing this shirt very soon as your new year's resolution. So I hope you're looking forward to that. I was just going to say you are looking absolutely fantastic for our new year's Eve episode, provided you're a patron over at patreon.com. Ah, there you go. Nice plug. Nice plug. We might as well shout out our patron now because you already just segued into it. It is Mr. Steven Furch. Thank you so much for your support, buddy. So Joseph, how are you feeling about Legacy of Darkness? This sets a... Uh, it's fine. I don't think it's like, you know, a magic ruler type set or anything. We get some new cards, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of middle of the road about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling about the same. It's really frightening. If you look at the individual card list, you see these insane haymakers like Fiber Jar, like last turn with Jaugen in the format. You've got things like uh, Injection Fairy Lily. Those are all strong cards, but we don't yet have any of the peripheral stuff that actually makes them good. So Correct. we're left playing functionally the same decks we were last format, I think, for the most part. <laughs> I mean, that's just very indicative of the old game. You know, you would just, at times, get better cards, throw them in your deck, and you just play good stuff dot deck. But yep. I'm going to go ahead and roll the die here. Ooh, okay. Mr. Furch is uh, coming in clutch here with these die rolls. And oh, all right. First die roll win of the year. I will take that, and we will be going first. Good luck, Joseph. Oh, good old rock. It never fails. Oh, this is a fantastic Ooh. hand. This game is I over before it's agree. even begun. All right, so I'm going to draw for turn before I forget to do that. That is my New Year's resolution, Joseph. We are going to remember to do every single turn one draw for the entirety of the season. We'll see if that holds up. I'll probably fuck it up before the end of the episode. But we're going to start off with Graceful Charity, baby. Ah, uh, man. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine with me. Not like I could do anything about it anyway. And I think we're going to get rid of this nice Sinister Serpent in our oh, hand. That's a great on. card to start off with. And oh, this 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 last one's actually a little bit tough. I I'm gonna have to think about what I want to get rid of. I'm actually gonna give up the Asura Priest as a matter Ooh, of fact. Ooh, so you're playing Azura Priest as the out to scapegoat. One out to oh, scapegoat. Okay, yes. All right. Yes. There are a we'll couple of really powerful ones in this set, but I don't know if we're going to get to see all of them. Now this isn't one of them, but it's still a powerful card nonetheless. Pot of green. Jesus Christ. Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed. Yeah, excited to kick this year off right. How about a delinquent duo, Joseph? You want to keep it going? A duo? Yeah. <laughs> the Go New Year's it, festivities just keep on coming. I love 2021. Let's go ahead and hit this one out of your hand. Hmm. All right, it is my Nobleman of Crossout, and right. I will be losing my Sangan as well. Okay, let's go ahead and follow that up with a monster that we will set, and I will set one and two cards face down. Go ahead. Jeez. So turn one, you opened Graceful Charity, Pot of Greed, Delinquent Duo. I'm down 16 cards. What am I supposed to do from this position? On your draw phase, drop no, off. Get that no. card out of your hand. Ooh, that's a good one. Say <sighs> goodbye to that. Mirror Force. All right, I don't need this. So we'll set these two cards and pass it back to you. I hope your hand is full of garbage like drop off. Time well, seal uh, me. We'll have to see what happens. I will draw here and uh, let's go ahead and start by standby phase. Let's get our Sinister Serpent back to start. Seems pretty good. Yeah, and I think we'll actually go ahead and fire off this copy of the Forceful Sentry. Let's just see what that last card is in your hand and uh, get rid of it. 
All right, well, it's a red Gecky. Uh, no All problem. Right. Uh, I'm on two cards. You're on one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! as Kazuki Takahashi intended. Oh, and it's about to get a lot worse. So I'm going to flip some in Magician of Faith. Is that fine? No, I was hoping that was not the case. I almost fired the Raigeki expecting it was a Magician, uh, but I figured if it was, I was probably losing anyway. You can add back the Delinquent Duo. I think that's probably the pick here. Clearly that is the best pick, but uh, I think the second best pick is the Graceful Charity. I think we're going to be going for that one. Oh, Next, I'll go boy. ahead and fire that off. Let's yeah, go ahead and yeah. uh, draw three deeper here. <laughs> Man, this is just uh, this is just not looking good for you, Joseph. I don't know what to say. Oh yeah, you know, I I was really under the impression that everything was going well until the fourth graceful charity resolved. Well, we'll get rid of the sinister serpent, obviously, mm -hmm. and I think I'm gonna get rid of this copy of Fiber Jar. So you know, I'm on this, unfortunately. You're playing Fiber Jar. Okay, this is going to be a very strange one. Okay, so now we have to deal with the two cards at hand here. Oh yeah, well, that's gonna to... be really difficult for you. I think it's only one really when we have heartbeat feather duster so let's go ahead and clean that up please uh this is not super devastating uh it is a gravity bind interesting there okay so it seems like you're on some sort of control deck here let's go ahead and uh i guess find out where this game is going to go i'm going to normal summon a gemini elf and uh let's attack into what you've set all right to the grave goes witch of the black forest and i will activate that effect that's pretty nice you'll be able to get a card here hmm I think hilariously, I actually want Sinister Serpent. It's not bad. It's not bad. And uh, we'll get in for 300 with the Magician of Faith. Sounds good. Uh, you are only 7,700 life points away from the end of the game. All right. Uh, I'll just go to main phase two, and uh, I think I will just pass the turn. Go ahead. All right. I will draw. Oh. Well, that's an interesting one. I'm going to normal summon Sinister Serpent. Do we have a creature swap? Oh, um, God, I well, wish. Before, before, before we do that, let's think about this. Hmm. Normal summoning Serpent. What are you up to? Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. All right, I'll proceed to the battle phase, and we will walk into this Magician of Faith. All right, and the creature swap is definitely coming. Oh, no, wait, you're crashing, actually. Never mind, so that's not the case. God, I oh. wish. No, we're just going to be passing the turn. Okay, I mean, that's fine. I will draw, mm -hmm. and... <sighs> Gonna get our serpent back to our hand. Feeling pretty good about that. And Joseph, this is just where the game is just basically over for you. I don't really know how else to tell you this, but we have the legendary Yada Garasu. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Christ. Okay. Now luckily you have the Sinister Serpent, so at least you get that every turn, but I don't know if that's really gonna matter in this particular instance. Okay, here's the boy. Let's make All it right. happen. Yep, we'll get in for 21, and uh, we will go to the end phase, and Yada will come back to our hand and uh, go Go ahead. No draw for you. Well, the good news is I do get the Sinister Serpent back. Um, the better news is I was kind of hoping you'd commit something to the board so that Snatch Steel actually accomplishes something. Ooh, that's actually a pretty good one. Yeah, you will get the elf. Uh, okay, now I can only hope that we get our draw phase next turn. I'll set one card and get in for 19. I will take it. All right, I'll pass back to you. All right, I will draw. And uh, man, do I have some bad news for you? That may not exactly be the case, but we you're will telling have to me in the seven go. cards you have, one of them destroys <laughs> a spell or trap. Shocker, right? You know, I am trying to be way too cute. I am overthinking this. I am just gonna heavy storm. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you got it. Let's go to game two. <laughs> I can't believe you have done this to me. I had such an interesting deck lined up with such a cool line of play, and then you yada locked me. Come on. Welcome to Legacy of Darkness. Happy uh, New Year, Joseph. <laughs> yada Garasu is such a weird card because there's an argument even at this point in the game as to whether it's actually good or not. You know, it wins on board states where you're already massively ahead. But boy, oh boy, does it win on board states where you're massively ahead. Okay, uh, I'm going to go first this time, and uh, I'm going to lead off with a forceful sentry. It's not delinquent duo, but I'll take it. It's only fair considering how Jeez. my last turn one went, so go ahead and take a look. Oh my god, this is miserable. Okay, so we've got Harpy's Feather Duster and Heavy Storm, so these functionally do the same thing. There's Fiber Jar. I don't don't feel too bad about letting you have it. I mean, realistically, how bad could it end up for me? And then Sangan and Mystic Tomato, of course, are whatever. I'm going to go for the Harpy's Feather Duster here. I think this is probably, well, depending on the contents of your hand, that's probably correct. Right. Uh, 
you have to understand, if my deck is worse than yours, then I actually do want to see you keeping Fiber Jar here. <laughs> I mean, Fiber Jar is just a hard reset for you, so if anything, you're probably hoping that that happens. I think that was my only out last game, was if you uh, just forgot that uh, it's a downside for you to activate it on a winning board state. I mean, uh, given how good we are at Yu-Gi-Oh!, that's very likely that that would have happened. We're going to go ahead and set two and pass it back to you. All right, well, let's see how we can recover from this one. That is not too bad bad. I suppose I shall lead the charge with a humble mystic tomato. Is that fine? Yeah, that's okay. All right. I will follow that up by going to the battle phase. Okay. And let's attempt to attack into the set monster. It is my sinister serpent, my most trusted it's friend. So good, isn't it? Such <laughs> a powerful fantastic. card. fantastic. I'll just go to main phase two. I will set myself a card and I will pass over to you. Set a card? What on earth would you be setting? It's not the heavy, or if it is the heavy, I think I don't care. I'm going to fire off the dust tornado and either get the heavy or the card you drew for turn. It was the mystical space typhoon. Okay. God, you are just loaded up on spell and trap destruction. It never hurts to have some from the side deck. All right, I guess I'll get a sinister serpent again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set two cards and then pass it back to you. You know, it could really be anything that you have in your set monster row. Tr Trust Let's fire me, off confiscation, though. Face. Let's take a look. Oh, um, okay. I guess I'm okay with this. This hand is only all right. We've got a nobleman, which was gunning for the fiber jar, uh, swords of revealing light, and a change of heart. So unfortunately, you do know what this set card is. Hmm. Which of these are the most worrisome of the bunch? Probably change of heart. Swords obviously can just die to heavy storm, so that's not a big deal. I love also when we both know what's in each other's hands, because then we can actually talk out loud about everything. Right. Nobleman of Crossout is potentially worrisome, but that's just assuming I'm going to be on some sort of defense. So I guess that could possibly shut down the fiber jar. I think change of hearts, probably the, the card here. All right. To the grave it goes. All right. I will uh, normal summon a Sangen. Is that fine? Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, that's okay. And uh, I guess we'll just go to battle phase. Let's just try to hit into the sinister serpent and try to get in for a thousand. You got it. In retrospect, I don't know why I attacked that way, but it's okay. I'll just pass it. <laughs> you were playing around uh, a defense position mystic tomato that I ripped and then and, I'm uh, just so used to always attacking set monsters with the biggest monster. Uh, I guess I will get a Sinister Serpent here. Uh, I will proceed to main one. I will set one card, and then I will pass the turn. Wow, this is uh, so surprising and shocking that Are this you is the type of game yet? we find ourselves in. Yeah, it's uh, thrilling gameplay. I guess I just try to be more aggressive here and possibly play into whatever back row you possibly have. So let's just do it. I'm going to go ahead and normal summon a copy of Asura Priest. Off the top. God, must be nice. Uh, that's fine. Let's go to battle phase and hit into your serpent. To the grave it goes. Try to get in for 14. That is okay. And try to get in for 17. Also fine. And I will go to my end phase. We will just put the Asura Priest back in the hand and pass it over to you. All right. I'll draw for turn. Oh, finally, something worth summoning. Give me the Sinister Serpent back. All right, we Gemini will take, Elf's a pretty good one. We will take the Gemini Elf. I will proceed to battle phase, and we will get over the Sangan. Sure, so I will take 900 from this, and I will activate the effect of Sangan. Sounds good. Gemini Elf is quite large, but I do have a card that can take care of it, and that is Exiled Force. Hmm. All right, you are really out here. Okay, um, I'm going to activate in main phase two, Swords of Revealing Light, and then pass back to you. Interesting. I will draw. That's not too bad. This is weird. You know I have heavy, so I guess I'm a little bit perturbed as to why you decided to play the swords. So let's see, the last two cards in your hand are Serpent Nobleman. Yeah, I'll take the bait. I'll have you. Sure. So the other set card is Scapegoat. So okay. now I get you in a position where you either have to spend your normal on Azura Priest to out the scapegoat and fail to out Gemini or Exiled Force and fail to out the goats. I think this is a very obvious Azura Priest play here. So sure. we're just going to do that. Go to the battle phase. I will attack into every goat. Such a cool card, by the way. Also very on flavor. <laughs> <laughs> cool for exactly one person here. I'll main phase two. Go to the end phase. I will take... Asura Priest back. Go ahead. All right. I will draw for turn. Oh, thank God. It's Pot of Greed. Just when I thought oh, this game was over. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, oh, unfortunately, it has not <laughs> bequeathed the best <laughs> options onto me. 
Oh, God. All right. Well, if I walk into Mystic Tomato, what are you going to get? You can get Witch of the Black Forest, another Mystic Tomato. I can't imagine what other powerful dark monsters you're on. Oh, this is awful. Okay, uh, I am going to set one, set two, and pass turn. All right, I will draw for turn. Let's start off our turn by firing off the Forceful Sentry. Let's go ahead and see what you got. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so the additional pickups were Heavy Storm Jinzo. Ooh, so you did in fact set the Serpent. I like to see it. All right, I think I'm going to shuffle back your Jinzo. Yeah, that seems right. The idea was I could tribute the Gemini Elf for Jinzo if she survived the Azura turn, but you do have the Exiled Force, and I don't really have a good out to that. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's uh, a little bit difficult for you. I've also got this Delinquent duo that I'm just going to fire <sighs> off now. Wow, that now was that a I know lot that of time on the that field. you spent on this. Well, I wanted to make sure I got rid of the correct card because, you know, Jinzo and, like, Monster Reborn and Call of the Haunted... I didn't want any of that going on. So Fair. let's just go ahead and uh, normal summon this exiled force, if that's okay. That's fine. Let's get rid of the Gemini elf. Fine. And then uh, we'll go to battle phase. We'll hit into the serpent. To the grave it goes. And uh, I'll just pass the turn. Go ahead. All right. Stand by. I'm getting this bad boy back. Ooh, now that is something. Hmm. I was really hoping to forceful the sinister out of your hand, so that way you didn't just keep uh, doing this. <laughs> God, that would have been fantastic. Well, uh, yeah. unfortunately, uh, the card I have drawn is deader than my chances in this game. Still have a back row. If I'm going under the assumption that you have a Sinister Serpent set, I will normal summon a Sura Priest. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to the battle phase. Let's attack into what I think is the Serpent. Oh, okay. Let's fire off that Mirror Force. <laughs> <laughs> You've been holding on to that one for a while. Oh, God. I was like, it's got to get the Azura Mystic Tomato or I am dead in the water. And it did. I will go to main two and I already summoned, so I will pass the turn. Oh, great. And I have a sick follow up. Let's go with the confiscation here. It only makes oh, sense after. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm I'm kicking myself now for not getting rid of your Jinzo because had I done that, I could have just reborn to Jinzo and just literally won the game immediately. <laughs> well, this is frustrating. I think I have to get monster reborn, but I'm leaving you with fiber jar of all things. I'm feeling pretty okay about that, even though I'm in a winning position. Fiber jar is still pretty good. <laughs> all right, so there is no way you are going to commit your normal to any Anything but fiber jar, so I am going to get extremely greedy and switch Sinister Serpent to attack <laughs> position. All right, I'll take the 1300. Uh, okay, noblemen are bust. <laughs> Well, first, Joseph, let's start with the graceful charity awesome, that we dude. Fantas <laughs> Off the top, why not, dude? After all that, you got it. Oh, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, don't you? All right, let's see Confiscation uh, second fiber jar. Can I just win the game here? I don't think I can, and that really sucks. I'm going to get rid of the jar. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the question is what the last card I want to get rid of is because I'm trying to anticipate where this game could potentially go. Yeah, this is probably right. I'm going to get rid of this MST. Sure. I will normal summon a Gemini Elf, and uh, we luck. will hit into this Sinister Serpent for 1600 All right. Well, I knew the risks when I signed up. I'll go to main two, and uh, let's see. You've got two pieces of hand destruction in the grave. Duo can't do anything to one card, so I guess I shall just keep this in my hand, and I'll pass the turn. All right. One time Jinzo. Oh, that is not good. All right, I'm going to set one card. We're going to set this uh, Sinister Serpent, and uh, we are going to pass turn. All right. That was one of the reasons why I was thinking about keeping the MST in case you drew something that could actually matter, but we'll have to could see. Could actually That's... matter is a pretty generous interpretation. Well, I guess we're going to have to see what you got. I'm going to change of heart your Sangue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this kills me, doesn't it? Uh, uh, possibly, depending on what the back row is. It is a solemn. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, it basically got some damage in, so not the worst, I suppose. I, I guess I'm kind of okay with this board, so I'll just set and pass. Go ahead. I'm not super happy about it, if Drop I'm being off! honest. Are you f a dude? <laughs> I needed this shit. <laughs> I needed it so bad. Oh, my God. Snatch deal. 
Uh, it's not Snatch Steel, but it's pretty good. Oh, that's a tough one. That's also another reason I didn't want to attack specifically into Sinister Serpent in case you did happen to draw Graceful Charity of all things. So I'm uh, pretty happy to see it. I mean, I might as well do this oh, to just put the screws uh, okay. on you. <laughs> There's, Go ahead. there's my good friend. Uh, I guess I will be passing the turn here. All right. I just need like one good card and uh, that is not it. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, well, all right then. Let's fire off that bad boy snatch steal. See, this is exactly what I was concerned about when I played the Jinzo. Oh my uh, god. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Now, this is going to have to not be Fiber Jar. Well, there are three in the format, Joseph. Are there? But it is a Magician of Faith. Oh, good. Just a Magician of Faith. Just a Magician of Faith. Aren't you so relieved that it's just a Magician of Faith? Oh god, there are so <sighs> many good hits here for you. If I get any of the spell and trap removal, I get Jinzo back. Unfortunately, that doesn't win me the game, but but it's probably going to have to be the option here. Monster Reborn, you have nothing in your graveyard, so that is useless. All the hand destruction does fuck all. I'll just take Heavy Storm. God, I, this is so frustrating. I, I was like, well, I can't risk it in case it's Mystic Tomato, because if I do, I lose. But if I switch Sangan to attack position because I have the read on Magician, I do win the game here. I <laughs> I just didn't pull the trigger. Oh, God. It would have been just enough. This is 2,400 coming in. Yeah. All right. I will pass turn. Now, I was really hoping that I would get to flip that myself and see... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, dude. Don't you, Joseph? Don't you? Let's fire off this heavy. Give me my Jinzo yeah, yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I uh, don't get your thousand life points. But uh, oh wait, during each of your opponent's standby phase, I actually do get the thousand. Excuse oh, yeah. me. I always think it's yours. I always think it's backwards. Okay, I have you so close to lethal. So so close. I think I'm dead to Ukazi here. You couldn't possibly I mean, you're have dead. me more close. Yeah. How do I not have lethal? I'm so close. Uh, oh, sh uh, I thought I had it. Uh, I thought I had it. I thought I saw the line, and the line does not work how I think it does. <laughs> we will just go to the battle phase. Let's just hit into your Gemini Elf. Uh, I wasn't doing anything with those 500 life points anyway. Nah, you didn't You didn't need it, right? I will go to main two. I will... You play Nobleman. I do. I will normal summon this Mystic Tomato, and I will uh, prepare for the Onslaught next turn. Go ahead. All right. It's gotta be Raigeki. Ah, this wasn't the game that the Raigeki was destroyed. All right, it's gotta be Raigeki. Come on, baby. <laughs> One time. Whoa! That's pretty good. Uh -oh. oh, I wow. don't I don't like to hear that. It's not Raigeki, but it is something. Is it enough, though? I don't think it's enough to kill you. <laughs> I mean, well, that I'm all, that's all I needed to hear. <laughs> um, ooh, now I have to make some decisions. Ooh, I hate that. So you've got Damn. <laughs> at least a Witch of the Black Forest in deck for the Mystic Tomato. I could have sided it out. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Kept in the Mystic Tomato, but sided out the target. Yeah. All right, so, oh, God. We are going to Monster Reborn. That's a top deck. It's, oh, wow. It's something. I'm going to go for something. the Exiled Force here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now I have a decision to make. Exiled Forcing the Jinzo, of course, is crazy. And, you know, game-winningly strong, provided I draw another Gemini Elf. But I've got one Gemini Elf left, and you've got two. <laughs> You're also playing cards like Azura Priest, which just generally have a lot of attack. I honestly think the play might be popping Mystic Tomato and keeping Change of Heart live off the top to win me the game. But I, I don't know. <laughs> the punish for it... <laughs> I like realistically, there's no difference between Jinzo and Mystic Tomato. If either of them connect on anything, I'm dead. Stop defense kills me no matter what's on your side of the field here. You could just pass right now and I could just, you know, save you the thinking. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. I am going to exile force. I'm going to target your Mystic Tomato. <laughs> okay, we'll see if you regret it. And, you know, as I draw solemn judgment off the top of my deck, I'm going to feel like an idiot. But until then, I'm going to pass turn. <laughs> All right, Joseph, there's about, I would say, half the cards in my deck probably kill you on this board so let's see if we can draw one of them wow that was not one of them oh. uh, 
<laughs> oh my god. The idea is that by keeping Jinzo, all the traps in your deck are also turned off. And all of those beat me right now, too, so... This is just so frustrating. How can I just not game you? How do you think I feel? I mean, yeah, you probably feel the exact same way. I suppose I will set a card and pass to you. Okay, as God is my witness, I am going to need a miracle off the top here. A New Year's miracle? <laughs> <laughs> God dang it! <laughs> I, I hate Yu-Gi-Oh so much. <laughs> I hate it so very much. <sighs> okay. Uh, what am I dead to if you draw it off the top? So many cards. Oh, just so many cards. Um, Raigeki. Uh, likely Dark Hole. Uh, eh, ooh, uh, the card in your hand. What on earth is it? It's something that you wouldn't set and you wouldn't waste a normal summon on. So it's either like a Harpy's Feather Duster or some card that's similarly dead, or it's a Sinister Serpent that you're waiting to find a graceful charity for. I guess it could be a piece of hand destruction if you hadn't found all three this game. <laughs> Jeez, I, I am struggling to think what it could possibly be. Okay, um, the card I drew is Regeki. Wow, that that's a New Year's miracle if I've ever seen one. It's something. So <laughs> if I don't think you have a monster in your hand and I bank on you failing to draw one this turn, I can flip summon the serpent and switch the Sangan to attack and put you on a two turn clock. The card you could have in hand that would out this board would be, can't be a monster that's not named Sinister Serpent or Yada Garasu. <sighs> Yada has what, 300 attack? 200 attack. Uh, 200 attack, 200 attack. So it wouldn't be able to out the Sinister Serpent. That's what, if, that's just another reason why Sinister Serpent's the best card in the game. It could be an exiled force, but I feel like, oh, if it's an exiled force, you don't have a good hit onto my board because tributing it sucks, but you also could have just attacked with it and put me on whatever I get off Sangan can't be Magician of Faith because then you can kill it with Exiled Force. That set card has got to be something crazy. It could be Mirror Force, which would be fine for me because I would get the Sangan proc. It could be Solemn Judgment, which would be fine for me because I'm not activating <laughs> anything else for the rest of the game. It could be Drop Off, which is a little late and would justify the the switch everything to attack position line. <sighs> There's no way you would keep a beater in hand. If I put you on no beater in hand, it's a Yada or a Sinister Serpent, and fade a single draw step. I think I think that's my only way out of the game, dude. Oh my god. Back to the wall. What you gonna do? Oh, it's so bad. If I pass here, I'm giving you so much time. You've got another graceful charity in deck. You've got two more Gemini elves for which I have functionally no out without Raigeki. I've lost all of my reach. Change of Heart Snatch Deal is already in the graveyard. I've gone through Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity. Anything that recycles those is gonna take a turn to set up, which gives you infinite time to find it. Okay, I'm going for it. Oh my god, he's going for it! Oh, Jesus Christ. This is 1300, that puts me down to 11. Alright, show me anything. Do you want me to mill it off the top? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, your funeral, buddy. <laughs> oh shit. I think you would have liked me to mill it off the top because I wish I would have seen your reaction to it. So the card I drew for turn was a mystical space typhoon. Oh! <laughs> but I unfortunately had premature no! burial in my oh! hand the oh, whole time. God. <laughs> 
I couldn't have put you out of preem range regardless. Oh man. Oh man. I was I was praying into the camera that you were gonna switch everything forward. Cause once I did the math and realized that this still would have been live. Oh my god. If I did if you were correct and I was on Serpent or Yada, you would have just won the game. This was also a drop off. I yes. had Jinzo oh, up, so I couldn't me. have done if this wasn't Jinzo, I could have drop offed your regeki <laughs> of all things. <laughs> oh my god, what a disaster. Oh. So wow. Whew. If I had if I had waited a turn, I could have Raigekied the Jinzo and the Tomato and reborned one of them for lethal, but that would have lost to Preem uh, the Gemini Elf. What a terrible match. Oh my god. Okay, so you had Serpent Sangen like that entire game. So what I right. was afraid of the most is that do you pl that would have been a fucking top deck. <laughs> Holy something. shit. Do you play Fiber Jar. I don't. Okay, so I was actually kind of worrying about that for nothing. So here was my mm. issue. I could have gotten multiple monsters onto the field, and I could have tried to win the game like that. What I was worried about is that with Sangen, you would fetch a Fiber Jar, and then I had no way to be able to kill Fiber Jar, because at that point, all I had was like, I think Jinzo on the field, I think I had a Tomato with this premature burial, and so there was no other card I could have summoned that would have been able to, because at this point, you still had life points. This was before the, uh, the attacks right. that lowered you to 150. I had no way to, like, lethal you, and so well, the only card that could have done it was a Sura Priest, because Priest could attack into Sangen and uh, Serpent, but you can't special summon the spirit monsters. Right. So I had no way of getting both monsters killed and then hitting you for lethal damage. So I was just waiting for an opportunity where I could have actually done it, and they're just the opportunity just didn't present itself, which is why I held on to this premature burial for like four fucking turns. <laughs> Uh, I am on Cyber Jar, which I think would have accomplished pretty much the it exact have, same thing. Right. The only like trade off is that okay, if you did have to set Cyber Jar, I would have first crack. So right. then I would have at least gotten to maybe win the game that way. But I probably would have had to fade a battle phase in order to get the Cyber Jar uh, flipped up, and then so I couldn't actually kill you because I don't play any direct damage cards. So I mm -hmm. would have had maybe some good setup, like maybe some cards to protect me. But that's still a gamble. Like when it comes to the jars you don't know what you're gonna get and yeah it's just uh it's a little bit wacky <laughs> uh it's unfortunate that first game ended in 30 seconds when you opened graceful charity pot of greed delinquent duo uh because i was playing um tornado wall stall really oh my yeah. god so you actually did, were you playing control or did you get like the burn mill and you're just playing a gimmick no i i got control i was like okay, this will be fair. a fun control deck i imagine you did as well yeah i, I got control if i got aggro uh, or beat down i was gonna play like triple spear dragon triple Hell like yeah. i was just gonna go all in on like the scapegoat punishers mm -hmm. and i actually really really wanted to play that but unfortunately i didn't get it but it i was pretty happy with cards. this uh drop off i mean this card is pretty damn good <laughs> yeah i overlooked pretty much everything in a uh, legacy of uh destruction exiled force i think i probably should have considered i figured azura priest would be bad because you would have cut scapegoat by this point uh and i'm not i'm not messing with fiber jar i'm sorry i i refuse so it's, here's it's too hard for me to justify when it comes to asura priest i know that you really value scapegoat which is why mm. i played one asura priest i think i cited a second one for when i saw you were on scapegoat for sure but mm. i actually just like you i actually cut scapegoat entirely because there's too many cards from legacy of darkness if this set did anything it punishes scapegoat very significantly we even saw asura priest get to have a little bit of action in this episode but it's really really tough to play i mean scapegoat's still nuts right but yeah, if with cards that can search asura priest i mean aaronite parshath is also in the format i was on that you just didn't get a chance to see it they're just really really strong cards i wanted to just kind of build a deck that was kind of the essence of hand control and hand destruction before we get to Veronic guardian which is our next episode where you get dawn zalug you get spirit reaper you get the cards that actually are actively ripping cards out of the hand as well i was thinking of playing white magical hat but it's a light and so i'd have to play like shining angel to facilitate yeah. it i guess or <laughs> tomato tomato is just so strong because it can not only get witch and sand Gen, but it can also get zalug and reaper which is crazy right and so the other thing with fiber jar so the only reason why fiber jar is in here a i love this card but b mm. fiber jar is just a really nice comeback mechanic if we're in like a simplified game state which we were kind of in towards the middle of this second game fiber jar is just a nice way to reset the board entirely similar to cyber jar but fiber jar depletes both players of having an advantage over one another you both start on that fresh five 
alive. You also like reset the graveyards and everything as well, which is important for stuff like Call the Haunted, Premature Burial and all that. So it's almost like this last resort type of like, oh shit, my back's to the wall. I need to like reset everything. That's why Fiber Jar's in there. I just played one. I know it's at three, but there's no way in hell I was playing three of this card. <laughs> no, yeah. And it's not at three for very long. I think we're about to see it get limited. Um, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a ton of flexibility, obviously. Uh, my side deck was 15 cards designed to be able to board out of the terrible uh, Umi <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> One card that I, I'm very upset didn't get to make an appearance, despite being very good in both just normal control decks and also the, I guess, water build, uh, is Penguin Soldier. We've yes. just not seen this card whatsoever, and it's kind of crazy against, like, boards that have Jinzo on them, for example. Yeah, it just has a really nice way of interacting with cards that it sets you back two whole summons, and we're at a point in Yu-Gi-Oh! where you're still really only summoning once a turn, maybe twice if you have, like, a Reborn or a Premature Burial, but those cards are still pretty few and far between. So I think it was cool that you uh, played a very interesting, very really overlooked sort of deck. And you also you have like- say the... bad. I mean, we, <laughs> we all, we know. You also have like the level modulation stuff because you're playing a Legendary Ocean, right? Yeah, the idea was when a Legendary Ocean resolves, I, I was on like a, a beater suite of Aqua Spirit and um, Seven Colored Fish. Yep. And you saw in game one, the Gravity, gravity bind. bind. Yep. So if we Gravity Bind your Gemini Elves, but my copies of uh, Seven Colored Fish are level three, then we still get to get in. Of course, that requires finding about four specific cards and nothing getting heavy stormed, which is <laughs> not going to happen. I realized in that first game, I actually misplayed. When I flipped up my Magician of Faith, the card I had set that you never got to see was actually Torrential. And so I could have actually had you Yada locked right at that moment if I chained oh, Torrential God. to my flipping a Magician Ugh. of Faith. So I had to like find a way to like re-engineer it to be able to get the Yada lock going, but that was the much easier way I could have done it. I'm just out of practice playing such old Yu-Gi-Oh! but Yada's still Yada, man. I mean, I was, I, I didn't think we were actually going to achieve the Yada lock in this episode whatsoever. I thought that was going to come later when we get to Invasion of Chaos and you get to really see the shenanigans with like Last Will and Chaos Emperor. Mm -hmm. Even during this time, I think uh, during the World Championship around this time as well, they all these decks were still on Yada Garasu and I think Hand Destruction was just the way to go. Again, in a post Fronic Guardian environment when you have more tools at your disposal. Right. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't playing Yada, which was a huge oversight in retrospect. I was like, no, no, historically, Yada has only been sort of good. It resolves game states where you're already ahead, but, you know, it doesn't win the game on its own. I forgot this is a format that doesn't have all of the GOAT format cards. It's missing, like, Ring of Destruction. It's missing the spot removal that dealt with Yada in really, you know, frustratingly crusty, but still effective ways. There's just not really quick play monster removal outside of, like, Torrential Tribute. So it's actually super easy, this format, to get Yada locked out of the starting game. Again, talking about Pharaonic Guardian, Ring of Destruction's in that set as well. So, I mean, talking about just like heavy hitter after heavy hitter, that was, I believe, a secret rare in that set. And yep. for good reason. It's like one of the first pieces of just general spot removal. We might even see some shenanigans go down where you and I might result in draws. I'm not sure if that's going to happen mm. because if we're going by pre errata text, there's going to be instances where you go attack and just ring your own monster for game. Boy, that's going to be fun. When we have three Ring of Destruction legal before the ban list sets in. You thought this format was bad. Just wait, it might get infinitely worse for you. <laughs> oh boy. Well, at least I will be enduring it in my, my absolute favorite shirt. I was about to say, that's something you definitely can't overlook because uh, you're going to be doing a nice, fresh New Year's wash for the lovely Shirt of Shame for the next episode. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pharaonic Guardian is next, and we're going to be seeing much more hand control next time. A lot more strategies are starting to become unearthed, and we are just getting started. 2021 got started off with a bang, with a Yada Lock, and we're going to be doing that a lot more to Joseph as we move forward. But we have to shout out our Patreon as always, so big shout outs to Gray Lane, Pony Stark, Joshua Wiley, Tim 00x3, Michael Dente, Mystic Walk, Oli, Sylvia Wilds, GW, Jarvis Martin, Par 2, The Astro Wolf, G Man 99, Dan the Man Hoban, Logan Thomas, Matthew Fehrenbacher, Dragon Lord, Dolly Wop, Synchro Guy, Peter Gregory, Angeoko, Thomas Nelson, Emil Cohen, Draconic, Showtagonist, Steven Choppa, Leo Roche, Alex Smith, Jordan Coots, Timothy Chen, Jesse Wood, and True Nerdgasm. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Happy New Year, and we will see you next time.